Hey my friends, welcome back to another episode of the Euro Cooking Canuck. I hope you're all doing well and keeping safe and thanks for spending a part of your day with me. Guys, before we get into this segment of Memories of Macedonia, I want to share something with you. I was sent a really sweet video. Now the story behind this seems like Dad, Chris, had made my um, Zelka Supa recipe, which is the cabbage soup and he served it to his children. So mom, Vesna, decided to film um, the kids' reaction. And the, they're, they're so sweet, all of them. There's Daniel, who is 12. Um, there is Christian, who is six. And Vanessa, who is three. And they basically rated um, my recipe. I have permission to show you the video, so I'll let you guys see, and I'll put that in right here. Um, presentation 10. Uh, the way it tastes gets a 10. ten. Do you like Dan Miklos's recipe? Yep. Yeah. What about you, Vanessa? Mm. Do you like the recipe, Dan Miklos's recipe? <laughs> I do. Do you like the recipe? 10. Bravo. So it looks like I got. 10 out of 10s all across the board there. So I really want to thank you kids so much for trying out my soup and good for you that you're eating healthy home cooked food that mommy and daddy make for you. So this video is dedicated to you kids and hopefully mom and dad will make this for you as well. So on today's segment of Memories of Macedonia, we're going to be making Pecini Costinha Socomperi. And that is basically a baked, a meat patty with potatoes. It's kind of like a manja. It's really good guys and it's simple to put together. I know you're gonna love it and I know the kids are gonna love it too. So guys without further ado let's get in the kitchen and make Macedonian pecini compiri e costinha. Aide! <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the kitchen countertop. As usual, all of the amounts and ingredients I'm using today will be below in the description bar. Click show more. So the first thing we're going to do to start to prepare our pecene costinha, so um, compiri, is to season our meat. So in my bowl here, I have a combination of pork and beef mince. You can use pork and beef, you can use all beef, what would really be nice would be a half beef and half lamb if you have minced lamb. So to this we're going to add some seasonings. We're going to add some paprika and I have a little bit of um, Bukovic loot, the hot chili flake. If you like it hot, add it. If not, leave it out. So generous amount of that. Then some dafinka or vegeta if you don't have it, if you can't find it which you should be able to. Um, again, you can use a bouillon cube, um, a vegetable bouillon cube crumbled up. Then I have an onion, half of a large onion, and I want to grate my onion in. Um, so it's smaller pieces and it keeps the, the meat moist. So, oh, don't get the big pieces in there, guys. So I'll continue grating this and I'll bring you right back. Okay, guys, I'm tired of crying. I've grated in my onions. I just discarded any of the long pieces that fell in there. Then I have some garlic. I'm going to do the same thing and grate in garlic. Now, guys, if you, if you don't like raw garlic or onions, I mean they're going to cook, you can substitute for onion powder and garlic powder, but there's nothing like the real deal. And when it's really finely minced like this, it won't taste as raw in your mince once it's cooked. So continue grating in all of your garlic as much as you like, and then I'll show you what I add next. Last garlic guys. And I want you to 
when you get down to the end of the garlic and it's too difficult to grate, save the little ends. We're going to use them later. I'll show you. Right, so garlic in. Smelling awesome in here already. Get all that garlic. All right, then I'm going to add some really finely minced fresh parsley. And we'll save a little bit back for garnish. Knead it twice, chop it once. We're going to go ahead and season it with some salt. The good old squeaky here. Come on, squeaky. Not too much because the vegeta is salty. And you can always salt your own uh, dish after when you taste it. Good. Black pepper to taste. And then we're going to give this a good mix. Best tools you have, guys, are clean, clean hands. This would be something fun that the kids can do. Right, Daniel, Christian, Vanessa? You guys can do this part, right? I know you can. All right. So you want to mix this up, but you don't want to over mix it to the point where they'll be tough. So just make sure everything is incorporated. That's good. And guys, I cook by smell as well. So smell your mixture. You'll know what you need to add more. Um, or if you think there's not enough parsley, add more parsley. Um, if you want more garlic, you, you know what I'm saying here, guys. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover this up and I'm going to place it in the fridge to chill, but mostly for all the flavors to melt together. You can keep this overnight if you like, but I'm going to keep mine in the fridge for about an hour and I'll see you then. Hey guys, so it's been about an hour and 20 minutes, an hour in the fridge, and I've let my meat sit out at room temperature for about almost 20 minutes because you don't want to put cold meat in a hot oven. It'll seize up on you and get tough. So we're going to go ahead and start making our koftinya or kofte. The meat is nice and soft. And what we're going to make basically, guys, are little patties. So start off with rolling the meat in your hand and then you're just going to simply make this into a little patty. Now because we're using potatoes we want to make these approximately the same size as our potatoes. I mean it's not hugely important but just for uniformity. All right so there's our one kofte done. I'm going to place it aside on some tin foil here and we'll start on another one. So again, grab your mix, try and make them the same size, okay, and like that. It doesn't take long guys, okay, you can make quick work of this. You all know how to make little patties. So I'm going to continue making these and then I'll be right back. Hey guys, patties are all done. Let's move on to our potatoes. Hey guys, we're going to start on our potatoes. We want a slice of potato for every kofte you have. Now with this recipe, I'm using a kilo that yielded me 15. So you should get 14 to 15 kofte. How many potatoes you use will depend on how big your potato is. So start off with a couple and see where it gets you. So I'm going to cut off the, the very narrow ends. And then we want to cut these probably maybe a half inch thick. Okay, it's potato slices like that. Um, a little bit thicker if you like. Because these have to cook with the kofte. Now here's a tip. 
if your potato's rolling around a little bit, give it a slice on the bottom so it has a flat surface to sit on so it won't roll around. All right, so we have two, four, let's say five real good ones here. I'll put these aside for now. You can use these guys in another recipe. Um, you can freeze them, dice them and freeze them. All right, so I'm going to continue with the rest of my potatoes and then I'll show you what I do. All right, gang, so I have all my slices of potato took me three potatoes. So let's just put this aside and take out your tepsia or your casserole dish. Um, I'm using one from Macedonia. Um, you can use a um, 13 by nine casserole dish, a clay pot, it's completely up to you. So you're gonna start lining. So you're gonna take a kofte, then a slice of potato, and keep going around. So kofte, potato, and keep doing that, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all done. All right, guys, as you can see, I've gone around the tepsia, and I've used the smaller ones for the center. And then in the middle, you can place a smaller piece of potato. Now, next ingredient guys, tomato. So I have some beautiful vine ripe tomatoes and I'm, they're big. And I'm going to cut some rounds. Okay, and what you want to do with your tomatoes, let's bring our coffee back, is every second coffee and potato combo, you'll add a tomato. So here's one, two, three, we'll add a tomato. And just wedge it in there. Okay, so one, two, three, wedge it in there and continue all the way around. All right, guys, everything is in my tepsia here. As you can see, it looks beautiful and appetizing. Guys, you don't have to go crazy with the placement of the tomatoes. I mean, do your best, okay? Um, and then, like I said, I put a few in the center as well. And I've just seasoned this with a bit of salt and pepper. And then, guys, I'm gonna place this aside for the moment and we'll carry on with the next element of the dish. Hey guys, welcome to the stove. So in my little pot here, um, I have some oil going and remember the little ends of the garlic I told you to keep? I have that with some paprika. Add that to the oil. Give it a bit of a stir. Don't let it go too long. Just until you can smell the garlic. And then I'm going to add paprika, I'm sorry, tomato paste. Give that a stir, just until it's broken down, and then I'm going to add some water. And we've created a bit of a sauce here. So I'm going to let this simmer. Just for a bit, I'm going to season. Just a bit of salt. 
And just when this comes to the boil, I'll take it off the heat and I'll meet you back at the counter. All right, guys, my sauce came to a boil and then I let it simmer for just a little bit. So it's quite hot still. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to ladle this into our tepsia. And you want your broth or your sauce to come pretty much halfway up your kofte and potatoes. So I'll continue with this. I'm leaving the garlic out, guys. I'm leaving it in the pot. I just want the sauce. So I'll continue doing this and I'll bring you back. All right, guys, so the sauce is pretty much halfway up my tepsia here. I hope you can see that. Um, and then what I'm gonna do, lastly, is I'm gonna place some piparki, some peppers. This is optional and these are hot. You can use sweet if you prefer, up to you. So I'm gonna place my piparki around. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this with some foil wrap. I'm gonna place this in the oven at 200 Celsius for about 25 to 30 minutes. I want the potatoes cooked through. However, in the last 10, 15 minutes of cooking, I'm going to remove the tin foil to get the potatoes and maybe the peppers a little bit of color. Now I have hardly that much sauce left, not much. However, if I find my um, tepsia or my, my dish is running dry, I shall add more, but I don't think that would be the case because the meat has juice in it as well. So in the oven it goes, middle rack, 200 C for maybe 15, 20 minutes, then uncover and cook for another 15 minutes. See you when it's all done, guys. Hey friends, pecheni koftinha, so comperi, manja is all done. It smells awesome in here. So, I've just taken this out of the oven a few minutes ago. Still very hot. Just going to garnish with a little bit of parsley. And guys, this with a salad is just amazing. Amazing. And I think everybody will love this kids included. Now, if you are a vegetarian, um, you can still make this, but instead of the koftinha, you can use portobello mushrooms, which still be very lovely. Now, don't forget to bring lots and lots of nice crusty bread to the table because you're gonna need it to sop up all the juices. So guys, thank you so, so very much for watching this segment of Memories of Macedonia here at the Euro Cooking Canuck. A big thank you to Chris, Vesna, Daniel, Christian, and Vanessa. I hope you guys try this and let me know how you like it. Guys, until we meet again, be good to yourself and to each other. Follow me on social media, like the video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, come and join me, and there'll be a few pics to follow. There's nothing else more to say than thank you so much. Follow Nogo. Aire Prieto.